Ladies and gentlemen, hobos and tramps, cross-eyed mosquitoes and bow-legged ants. Admission is free. Y'all pay at the door. Pull up a chair and sit on the floor. It's time once again for the world-famous Heartland Hoot Nanny. Hi, everybody. I'm Catch Seeker, Bull Crow Medicine Show, welcoming you to the Crow's Nest here at Heartland Studios in East Nashville, Tennessee, USA, for the most exciting hour of live stream entertainment you've ever seen since the transformation of America's youth by our nation's teachers. Our very special guest on the Heartland Hoot Nanny tonight is a native Nashvilleian whose singer-songwriter sensibilities have made her a shining star on stages throughout the U.S. and the U.K. The enchanting Laura Cantrell is on the Hoot Nanny tonight. So, friends, it's time once again. We gather to remember all the things that matter and forget about all those things that are driving us slowly insane. It's Saturday night, and we've got a place set for you at the table here in Music City. Folks, welcome one and all. This is the Heartland Hoot Nanny. Well, howdy, my friends, again, and welcome once one and all to this week's broadcast of the Heartland Hoot Nanny, that wonderful little live stream we've all been enjoying since the first stay-at-home orders found us grasping for the remote and a comfortable pair of sweatpants and maybe some vodka and searching desperately for Soma-like content to drive out all those little daily demons of COVID torment. We're glad you found us on the infinite end of the live stream dial. We know you have a lot of choices when it comes to live stream programming. You could just as easily be live streaming a yoga practice. practice. Namaste. Or a tutorial on filleting lake trout or walleye. Cut her right down a back boony. But no, you're here. And I know our minions toiling for pitiful wages and warm beer backstage at the Heartland Studios. Join me in saying thank you for choosing the Hoot Nanny instead of that live stream Q&A with the bassist of Blink-182. Tonight is a most special night indeed. As you guessed it, we're celebrating our back to school extravaganza. Hey, why don't you drag your favorite tardy or inappropriately dressed student or teaching staff member in front of the screen at home and tell them to get ready to learn because tonight on the Heartland Hoot Nanny, it's all gonna be about schooling ya. Yep. so write yourself a hall pass, pour something strong into that carton of 2% milk, Tonight promises to be music to your ears, just like fingernails on the chalkboard. There'll be thrills and fire drills and feather ink quills and geography quizzes about the cat skills. And what better way to celebrate America's precarious reentry into the hallways, locker pods, and cafetoriums of COVID era education than with this little ditty from a little help from Old Crow's Corey Yance and student Jerry Pentecost. Are you ready at home? Here we go. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the burning of the school. We have tortured all the teachers. We have broken all the rules. And tomorrow afternoon, we will hang the principal. His truth is marching on. Everybody! Go on. in session, and across the nation, kids are wondering why. Okay, like, this six-month summer, like, vacation has been pretty, like, cool, but is there a way to, like, avoid school, like, for even longer? Of course there is! Six months? Why not skip the next six years? Congratulations, kindergartners. You've now graduated from middle school. Or... Congratulations, eighth graders. You've now graduated from medical school. Think about it. But folks, seriously now, we know it's absolutely inconceivable that a nation built on educating students to the highest levels cannot simply forego educational advancement as a core American value. And besides, songs like this one guarantee we'll be coming back to school for generations to come.
got it bad, so bad, I'm hot to meet ya. primary and secondary and higher education, where would we be without you? Who would teach us the three R's? Or that the capital of North Dakota is not Fargo? Or how to pop a zit? Where would we first learn to dunk a tater tot into a pool of ketchup? Or learn that ketchup came from the ancient Chinese sauce known as Ketsiap? Where would we learn about friendship and algebra and, depending on our social standing, how to give or how to receive a wedgie in the boys' locker room? Who will teach us about Columbus and Jamestown and the Pilgrims and all those other outdated and culturally insensitive events that may or may not have actually taken place in the status quo reinforcement of a conveniently imagined pseudo-historic U.S. myth? Mythology. Oh, dear school, you've taught us so well. Now listen. Oh, what did you learn in school today, dear little boy of mine? What did you learn in school today, dear little boy of mine? I learned that Washington never told a lie. I learned that soldiers seldom die. I learned that everybody's free. That's what the teacher said to me. That's what I learned in school today. That's what I learned in school. And what did you learn in school today, dear little boy of mine? What did you learn in school today, dear little boy of mine? I learned that policemen are my friends. I learned that justice never ends. I learned that murderers die for their crimes, even if we make a mistake sometimes. And that's what I learned in school. That's what I learned in school. Oh, what did you learn in school today, dear little boy of mine? What did you learn in school today, dear little boy of mine? I learned that war is not so bad. I learned about the great ones we have had. We fought in Germany and in France, and someday I might get my chance. And that's what I learned in school today. That's what I learned in school. One more time now. Oh, what did you learn? Our leaders are the finest men, and we elect them again and again. And that's what I learned in school today. That's what I learned in school. Oh, what did, that's what I learned in school today. That's what I learned in school. Yes, school. Where will our love of learning be instilled without you? How will our brains develop through life's formative years without your hallways of knowledge, your desks of studiousness, the socialization of your playgrounds where seeds of empathy, love, and compassion are first sown? Where would we be with Ding! My eyes have seen the glory of the burning of the school. We don't need to pledge allegiance or to learn the golden rule. Cause we've got a Wi-Fi signal and a MacBook 8.2. It's truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Everybody, the internet is here to school. Fundamentals, because the internet is our school. Yes, it is. Log on to school right now. Oh, how about that, y'all? Man, welcome to this exciting back to school summer extravaganza. Thanks, everybody, for singing along at home, and thanks especially to anybody who was rocking out during Hot for Teacher. And speaking of teachers who start looking more and more like professional dancers when they put down their lesson plans and remove their glasses, it's time for Heartland's Hoot Nanny High Back to School Extravaganza Pop Quiz. Are you ready to play at home? It's easy. Just get out a number two pencil and a sheet of loose leaf notebook paper, and let's get ready to take the test. Now it's time to head on into the classroom. Come on, it's over this way. Woo! Let me just part the seas of knowledge. Oh my God, look at us. Let me get my name tag on. Unbelievable. Call me Mr. Secor. Hello, students. 
Hi, Mr. Secor. Hello, Jerry. I'm so glad you're joining us here. Now, Jerry, please take a seat at your desk, and folks at home, you can do like Jerry's doing, and print your name legibly in the upper right-hand corner of the paper. Yes, just like that. Now, each student will have 20 seconds to answer the questions. Now, before we begin, girls and boys, here at Hootenanny High, the safety of our students is our number one priority. It would be unsafe at this time. Oh, very legible, Jerry. It would be unsafe at this time to open up our school, and so therefore this pop quiz will be taken in a secure, coronavirus-free environment, like a empty uh, uh, football stadium. Oh, perfect! Can't you just smell the hot dogs and the Cracker Jack and the spilled beer still wafting by? Trust me, the place is completely deserted. Now, Heartland High students, for your first question. When threatened, the Texas Horn Frog ejects what liquid out of its eyeballs? Ready, Jerry? Tick, 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 tick. We gotta write something. Tick, 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 time! Next question. And next COVID era school facility. For your safety, Heartland High classes will now be conducted in an abandoned Kmart parking lot. Ooh, plenty of room to social distance here. I see a couple of old shopping carts for PE. Anyway, it's time for question number two. Ready? What's the capital of North Dakota? Bonus points if you can tell me who this capital city was named in honor of. Tick, 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 time! So sorry. Moving right along, the school board has just unanimously passed the measure allowing Heartland High to open up in the middle of a... Iron ore mine! Ooh, now I think someone's been smelting. Ooh, nice shaft. Okay, quick question. Number three. What was the main ingredient in southern in southern China's sauce called ketchup, from which America gained the word ketchup? Okay, Jerry. Tick, 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 time. Oh yeah. Let's see. Everybody's doing so well. Now, students. Again, seeing as COVID-19 has made it unsafe to hold classes on campus, we'll now be celebrating our nation by holding classes at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. Seniors and juniors, please park your mules at least six feet apart. Now, here's your question, folks, and folks at home, and Jerry. Which four Indian nations share a boundary with the Grand Canyon National Park? Tick, 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 um, yeah, not me. Uh, I crammed and these were some pretty tough questions. And then also, we keep moving the desk from classroom to classroom. You know, I wish I was just at old Heartland High. Oh, Jerry, of course, we all wish we were back in our homeroom safe and sound. But until then, I'm wondering, where would you like to hold classes for the last section of the pop quiz and for the rest of quarantine? Hell if I know. Hey, what a great idea! Hell, let's hold our classes in... Hell! Oh, that'll be perfect! You see, the coronavirus germs burn up naturally in Hiles high temperatures, and with the endless expanse of purgatory, hell is the perfect place for social distancing. Oh, and in hell, you don't have to wear a face mask, because you're already getting in the way of clawing constantly in your mouth while you scream. Plus, people always drink bleach and, uh, and hand sanitizer, and the nose swabs that touch your brain, well, those are already routine in hell. Okay, perfect, y'all. It's time for our last question. Now, students, here it is. What? Will the last day of the global pandemic be? Tick 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 tick. What is it, Jerry? What is it, Jerry? Tick 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 tick. Hurry up now, tick tick. Time's up. All right, folks. If you answered Bismarck, if you answered, let me see what you got. Let me see what you got. If you answered blood, Bismarck, Otto von Bismarck, fish, Havasupai, Navajo, Hualapai, Hopi, Hopi, and Helifino then you are correct! How'd you do at home, folks? All right! Congratulations, students. Hey, let's see what's going Oh, you know what time it is again. Yes, it's time once again for News on Parade! Wow, the typewriter's working so well this week. It's News on Parade time, when the Heartland Hootenanny investigates what's going on in the hearts and in the minds of the members of the old Crow Madison Show, America's 
backpack wearing sweethearts. It's also that time when we open up the Pan American mailbag and read your correspondence. But first, our top news item. Well, folks, with all of those back to school sale items collecting dust on the shelves and deserted chain retailers across the nation, our hearts and our minds turn to America's school item purveyors and producers, those hardworking people who make sure no student is without backpack or trapper keeper, without protractor or calculator. Truly theirs is an industry hard hit by continued nationwide school closures. And so to do our part, we're proud to contribute some needed new content for today's long distance learner. Thanks to our friends at PBS Kids, Old Crow, has proudly recorded several kids' tutorial songs routinely featured on the network. Well, here, for one time only during the Heartland Hootenanny Back to School extravaganza, you can see all four of our special cartoon performances at once. These songs are all OCMS originals, and for once, they're age appropriate. So tell that youngster on the playground singing Drink Corn Liquor, Let the Cocaine Be to zip it. It's time we did something special for the children. Let's roll that tape. Mm. All creatures great and small have many ways to talk. snakes on pumpkin pie or chocolate cake i slip it in my piggy bank then count out every dime i can tell it all adds up i've got a mathematic mind i've got a mathematic mind using math all day long i count the skips when i go skipping stones out on the old duck pond and when my piggy bank's a jingling full of quarters nickels dimes i can count my lucky stars i've got a mathematic mind i've got a mathematic mind i use math all the time i can calculate the distance to the city limit sign i count the steps to the library the feathers on my canary long divide or multiply i've got a mathematic mind it all adds up in my mathematic mind i wonder 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 where the sun goes when it rains where the swirling whirling water flows when it goes down my drain this world is one big question mark so exercise your mind the answers will be waiting for the one who wonders why like garrett morgan lit the stoplight galileo scanned the sky old newton bruised an apple ben franklin flew a kite amelia steered her aeroplane edison saw the light these people just like you and me had questions on their minds oh i wonder 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 where my shadow goes at night why a pebble sinks beneath the waves but a big boat stays upright this world is one big question mark so exercise your mind the answers will be waiting for the one who wonders why these people just like you and me had questions on their minds Just a little zero going nowhere by myself. I'm just an empty circle who needs a little help. But put a number right beside me and I'll be on my way. Cause when it all adds up, a little zero goes a long, long way. I turned a dollar to a hundred dollar bill last night. Now all the other numbers want me by their side. This mighty little zero is the hero of the hour. Whoever thought that I had this kind of power I'm not just a little zero So come give me a shot Stick me by your favorite number And I'll take you to the top That's not too shabby, no 
I'm worth a lot more than they say Cause when it all adds up A little zero goes a long, long way Well, how about that? And special thanks to Gordon Harris and all the wonderful folks at PBS Kids who've been such a pleasure to work with through the past years. Ethan Sixer. And how about wonderful times to see old Crow bandmates Chance McCoy and Charlie Worsham rocking out again, not to mention the great Critter Fuquay. Well, all right. Corey, don't you think it's time we open up the Pan American bag? So I did. Wait, what are you looking at? Oh, are you just noticing our new threads? Of course you are, because they're that sharp on your TV screen. Hey, Kench, I know what these young scholars eating Lunchables on the swings and standing in line at the monkey bars are thinking. They want to know if these shirts will double as gym clothes. Well, students, you're in luck. Corey's right, folks. If your school uniform's been moldering at the bottom of your locker since before the global pandemic, then look no further. Old Crow swag items will look perfect on your next Zoom call math class. And say, are you one of those Heartland High dropouts who feels like giving us money and not getting a t-shirt for it? Well. Just click the PayPal link at the bottom of this page and help us keep our detention hall full of juvenile delinquents here at Heartland Studios. Okay, it's time to open up the Pan American Mailbag and hear from some of the folks who look forward to the Hootenanny all week long. And it's time for you, Corians, to pick up that juice harp and let us hear the sounds of learning. Special delivery. All right, he's teaching us, and we're reading from you. This one comes from Graham, Chris, and Johnny Larson, all the way out in King County, Washington. And look, they sent a big fiber. Dear Catch and Corey, we love Hootenanny and watching it. And here's some artwork that Graham drew, inspired by the show, and a donation from his savings. Thanks, Graham. Did that come right out of your piggy bank? Well, look no further, because with artwork like this, your piggy bank is going to be filled up for years to come. You look like the mark of a true artist. Oh, look at that. Thanks, Graham. Here's one from our friends in PA. Hi, Catch. We were sad to miss last week's show because we were at Chipotle, but at least that means that we had a double header. I don't know what that means. We loved and look forward to your show and our handwriting. Cheers from Pittsburgh. Thanks, Claudia and Chris. And here's one from our friends in Scott City, Missouri. Woo! You know what goes on in Scott City, Missouri. Well, not much, but there's some letter writing going on in that city. And let's see what those letters say. Whoa, cold hard cash. Catch, I've been listening to your OCMS music for a long time and I got to see OCMS in Carbondale, Illinois about 20 years ago. We're not that old. My friends, Dan Fister and Sean Asmus and I play in a group called Too Wet to Flow. Dude, that is a hot band name, Scott City Mo. Too wet to flow. We always play Wagon Wheel, Down Home Girl, and I hear them all. Go Cardinals! Thanks from your fan, Rick Bone. Thanks, Rick, out there in Scott City. Thanks for writing. Here's one from Shannon McDaniel, out there in Chagrin Falls, Ohio. Let's see what she's got to say. Looks like she sent a self-addressed stamped envelope. Oh, she's pitching us a new tune. Here's one that she's penned herself, I believe, called RV Paradise, by a songwriter from Ohio named Name Shannon McDaniel. Looking forward to hearing that one and maybe singing it. Hello, catch, not for live show. Ooh, does that mean you're gonna say something untoward? We'll find out later. And here's one that's beautifully written and designed from our friends at Cut and Shoot Texas. This is J and W and some friends from out there in the Lone Star Republic. Let's see what they have to say. Oh, looks like here's some artwork from the, the young Texan out there. Rodeo King Wyatt writes, Dear Catch, we love your songs, and we build Legos while we listen to your songs. Thanks, Wyatt, a future architect out there in the Lone Star Republic. And some great work here from his mom and dad. Thanks, Jess and Wyatt, and our, their dogs and chickens and donkeys and ducks are also saying hello as well. Oh, look, they typed it on a portable 1929 Remington Piper typewriter. All right, we got time for one more. It's a cool letter, a package, a parcel that came all the way from Queensland, eh? Out there, down below the equator, and there's a new record. Oh, look, there's some koozies that came with this. Open season in Queensland. Gonna fill that up with some Spites Ale, mate. And here is a letter from all the way down under in Australia. Let's see what they write. 
Good day, all you old crows, past and present. We just wanted to send some love all the way from down under in Brisbane, Bris Vegas. We love the Hoot Nanny, and we wanted to thank you for shining bright in these days darkened by the old COVID. We're big fans of old time Americana country and bluegrass, and you guys have been doing and been a big inspiration for us in what we do. We've thrown in a copy of our debut album, which we just pressed on compact disc for that vintage sound, and a couple of cool coolers, I mean koozies, to keep those tins cold during summer. I like drinking tins of ale in summertime too. Hope it puts a smile on your face or a skip in your step. Keep up the great work and hope to see you guys get back on the road soon shouting that mountain music and maybe even Australia again when things get better. Your mates from Open Season Band. Well, that's just wonderful. Now, folks, if you want to write the Heartland Hoot Nanny, it's easy. And with quarantine, providing you ample time for activities such as letter writing and stamp ordering and envelope Licking? Then please mail your letters to the Heartland Hootenanny in care of Old Crow Medicine Show's Heartland Studios. 7-Eleven, Heart Lane, Nashville, Tennessee, 37216. Don't have time to disinfect on your way to the post office? Stay home, folks! Correspond with the Heartland Hootenanny on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. All right! <laughs> okay. You know what that sound means. It's time to go straight to our next special segment on the Heartland Hootenanny. That wonderful bit that I like to call Brighten Your Quarantine with the radiant hues of tonight's very special guest. Folks, our guest on the Hootenanny tonight is a popular singer-songwriter with Nashville roots, New York fruits, and laud and honor across the pond, too. She's an old friend, old crow, and we were lucky enough to catch up with her just last month when she dropped by the Heartland Studios. Here she is, the always entertaining Laura Cantrell! Well, thank you, Catch. I'm so glad to be here. I've been watching the Heartland Hoot Nanny, and it seemed like a ball. So I thought I'd try to drop in in Nashville. And how is it that you knew that I was going to be in my, you know, <laughs> gingham? Well, I had a, I had a hunch. I had a hunch. A little bird told me. Well, I'm just glad we're we're uh, you're on the Hoot Nanny tonight. I've uh, I've loved hearing you play for all these years. You've got a big 20 year milestone that you're celebrating. Shocking. <laughs> and I got a fiddle that I want to back you up on on a tune. Can we start with a hot number? Definitely a hot number. I, I've got one for you. Shall yeah, I move Lord into Yeah, because Lord knows it's hot in here. <laughs> well, let me get my trusty fiddle here, and you can dazzle that screen right up. Ready?
It's Laura Cantrell on the Heartland Hoot Nanny doing Kitty Whale's dresses. Isn't that wonderful, everybody? Well, you sounded so good. Come back here so I can I'll talk come, to you. I'll come back over here, Coach. Oh, man. I, you know, I've been listening to you since the early 2000s, and the first time I ever heard you play was at the Cambridge Folk Festival. Oh, wow. And you were totally lighting up the stage. That's, that was you, right? That, I think that was me. Yeah, because everybody was talking about her. <laughs> and, um, and so I wanted to ask you, do you remember the first time that you ever heard my band play? Gosh, well, I, I do remember my husband coming home from Nashville one time saying he had stumbled across a band playing across the street from the old um, oh, 12th and Porter and playing a party down there. And he said, like, there was sweat flying and craziness, and it was old Crow Medicine Show. So I, I was looking out for that kind of overalls and no shirts and <laughs> yeah I've, I've misplaced my spittoon but go ahead well but you know i did i, I think that um you're you've got a record that's at least close to 20 years old because i played it quite a bit um the first couple old crow records on the radio thrift shop back in the day so i was um you know well aware of you guys and saw you in brooklyn and then saw you at playing at central park summer stage after playing at small clubs so we've been following the following the path of Old Crow all these years. Well, you know, you've always had a, a place on the radio, and of course your your um, husband, Jeremy Tepper, is up mm -hmm. there at one of my favorite stations. <laughs> he's always up there in Outlaw Country. That's right. He's not on it, he's, he's in it. He's definitely in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you also have this wonderful connection with one of my most favorite, and I think the world's most, one of their most treasured radio hosts and personalities and sort of a musicologist and a real British tastemaker, sort of the ultimate British tastemaker. How is it that you knew John Peel well? And tell us about your friendship with him. Well, uh, you know, when I put out a record uh, 20 years ago, I really didn't have any idea that it might get played on on uh, the BBC or that John Peel might play it, but he found it and because he really was that guy who liked to discover new music and he listened to every record that crossed his desk, he was definitely on a mission to find stuff to um, expose his audience to. So he did that with our record and I was as gobsmacked as anybody <laughs> that he took, took you know, a liking to my music and then eventually we did several Peel sessions. We went to his house and he was just, he was exactly like he listened, he sounded on the radio. He was, uh, you know, just a larger than life character who really just had the most fun talking about records and music and shows and when he saw this artist and who he thought was great. And, you know, he'd occasionally tell you who he didn't like, but <laughs> it was, it, he was a great guy to, to know. And that was a, a real honor for me early in my career. Mm, I love the Peel Sessions. That's where I learned about um, Joy Division, <laughs> The Cure, um, and the Jesus and Mary chain. <laughs> But I'm also so thrilled that I learned um, in researching this exciting opportunity to have you on the Heartland Hoot Nanny that you played on one of, that you sing and maybe play on one of my most favorite records. And it's Apollo 18 oh my gosh. by They Might Be Giants. <laughs> so I'm dying to know. I heard that record in the ninth grade right. and I was like, yeah, it was so <laughs> great. Yeah, you know, the, um, both John Flansburg and John Linnell were my neighbors in Williamsburg, Brooklyn several moons ago. And... You know, in that time when you're young and nobody has a job yet and you're all hanging around, well, they were they had a major label record deal. So if they called up and said, you know, we're recording today and and would you come over and maybe play, you know, sing these words we wrote to this song that sounds like The Lion Sleeps Tonight, you don't say no, you show up and do it. So, yeah, but we're still um, still close with those guys. And um, I wouldn't have pegged Catch for a They Might Be Giants fan, but now I've learned something here on the Heartland Hooten Nanny. Oh, come on. Well, I just know where the good music is. And I know, folks, that Laura Cantrell is coming up on a big milestone, a celebration of 20 years. Woo! And that's why I'm going to <laughs> make a toast here to 20 years in the music business. How early is it? <laughs> 20 years of exciting music making that's all culminated in a series of digital singles Tell us all about it. Well, so I was thinking about what I wanted to do for my 20th anniversary, and it's a t kind of time to make a record for me too. It's been a couple years, uh, but I thought that that just seemed too boring to, for you know, you could put a record out any old time. So we're doing a set of digital singles. We're crowdfunding to raise money to record them, and that that crowdfunding runs through the end of August, I think. So. Do you hear that, folks? Crowdfunding for this exciting project. Now, how can our Hootenanny fans donate to your? Indiegogo page. 
Well, you can find it on all my socials at laracantrell.com and you can search Indiegogo Laura Cantrell. It'll pop up in your browser. So come see us, come find us. And come help us get this new 20 year retrospective <laughs> recording project kicked off. All right, what are you gonna do for us next, Miss Laura Cantrell? Well, I thought, Catch, since you were talking about 20 years, that we would do a song from that record. Is that okay? Oh yeah, you mean from back when it all began? Back when it all began. And you know, I just saw you gulp down that. I got one for you if you're still thirsty. Oh, you mean you're gonna sing about the hard stuff? <laughs> I'm gonna sing about the hard stuff. I'm sorry, I stopped mid-sentence. It's one of my most favorite topics for singing. I was distracted by your choreography, but it, anyway. <laughs> well, give us a good drinking tune with Laura Cantrell. Yeah, this is a drinking one for the ladies. Trail celebrating 20 years of music making and merriment on the heartland. Hoot Nanny, give her a big round of applause at home and help her go out there on her Indigo page and get that exciting new record all paid, bought and paid for. Bought and paid for. Thank you so much, Catch. It's such a treasure to be able to visit you here in the Heartland Hoot Nanny. Well, I'm so glad you've had a chance to get out of your busy schedule to come out and see us, and I hope that you are doing well during the global pandemic. 
we're trying to stay safe and stay sane and hope everybody takes care of themselves. Yeah, and so stay safe and uh, and uh, keep your distance now and keep your hands clean and um, and thanks for giving us the cure for the coronavirus tonight, Miss Laura Cantrell. Thank you, Coach. Wasn't that wonderful? Thanks, Laura Cantrell. Well, folks, school is right around the corner, especially here down south where students return practically in the middle of summer. See, years back, kids in the predominantly agrarian South had farm work to do, and the early growing season meant that by the middle of May, it was time to get out into the fields, to pick, to weed, to sucker, to cultivate, to hoe. Though today's preteens probably spend significantly more time in shopping malls than in tobacco fields, the Southern back-to-school calendar has not changed. What's remarkable about this to me is how the calendar remains so closely tied to labor, which makes sense to me because ever since the end of child labor, hasn't school always been a child's primary place of work? School is the place where children go to sweat. They sweat over tests and over pop quizzes. They sweat over phys ed and they, and they, and they sweat over feats of strength and endurance. They sweat over friendships and romance. They sweat over bullies and teachers and they literally sweat as their bodies grow and change into the adults they're destined to be. But tonight's All My Tales Are Tall celebrates another kind of interscholastic pubescent perspiration. Because for kids like I was back in high school, the primary purpose of school was for rocking out. And the greatest opportunity to rock out was known throughout the hallways, classes, and lunchrooms simply as Rock Night. When I was a rising eighth grader in the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia, the junior high school library sent a letter home, highlighting a special back-to-school program they seemed particularly proud of. Head librarian Spitzer, more commonly known to us as Miss Spitz, announced that the school year would open with each eighth grader choosing their favorite book that they read over the summer to be displayed on the special collection shelf in the library. Well, reading the note, I immediately began to sweat. First off, I had only read one book all summer, but secondly, and more importantly, I needed to pick something that would undo my last literary debacle. You see, the year before, in the sultry first weeks of seventh grade, I had told all my classmates about reading H.P. Lovecraft's Cthulhu Mythos over the summer, and suddenly I found myself the subject of disturbing ridicule to the point of being called a devil worshiper by the cutest girl in school, Lisa Armantrout, who happened to be school ambassador to the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Well, any book I chose was certain to cause less alienation from my peer group. Either way, it felt like a crucial decision. What would I pick? Well, when school finally opened, Miss Spitz marched us all into the library to see what our favorite summer reads were. First off, they took us to a glass case erected in the middle of the periodicals, featuring the favorite summer reads of our teachers and school administrators. Mrs. Delavecchia's favorite summer read, the Bible. Mr. Hahn's favorite summer read, the Bible. Mrs. Shiflet's the Bible. Mr. Weaver's, the Bible. Mr. Marks and Mrs. Wetzel, and even Miss Lineweaver, the French teacher, yup! The Bible. Seriously, it was all Bibles. There were probably 25 teachers in the eighth grade, including Shop and Jim, and there were probably at least 23 Bibles in the case. The other two books were about auto mechanics, probably the two Votech teachers. Peering around at my dopey classmates, I could have easily predicted which titles awaited me on the shelf of returning eighth graders back to school summer reads. Comic books. I know what you did last summer, slashers. Maybe some Stephen King. Perhaps one titillating catcher in the rye nod. Cute Lisa Armantrout's favorite book was, you guessed it, the Bible. I scanned the book jackets. Where was my book? I inquired with Miss Spitz, who shot me a look of outrage. Your book is in my desk where it belongs. It seems Please Kill Me, the unauthorized biography of punk rock by Legs McNeil, did not stand up to the Bible as a quality summer page turner. I didn't care. Nothing, not school, not teachers, not even the wrath of Almighty God was going to keep me from rocking out at rock night. It's the fall of eighth grade, perhaps literally. And over at Harrisonburg High, a spectacle is about to take place that will set my flywheel spinning for years to come. Streamers are being unrolled and a bunting spread out across the stage in the assembly hall. A sound check is happening for the six or seven bands brave enough to prepare a song for rock night. 
and I'm sitting a half mile away in the junior high school library with Miss Spitz eyeing me suspiciously. My eyes are on a worksheet on using the Dewey Decimal System, but inside, I'm already standing in line with my ticket to rock night. The day ticks on endlessly. Will it never end? Classes all run together in my mind. Lunch is a mindless dipping of carrot sticks into ranch. I can't even taste anything. My life is the doldrum of a stasis chamber awaiting being loaded onto a rocket and launched into the stratosphere. And then, suddenly, blaring wildly, the only punk rock sound you ever hear in a junior high school, the sound of the bell. You're free. You throw everything into your backpack, which you don't bother to zip. You leap from your seat. You barely see the scoffing classmates as you've gone by. They may think you worship the devil. So what if you do? Onto the bus. No, skip the bus. Into the woods. You're running through that sketchy patch that connects the junior high to the high school football fields. It's that purgatory between schools, between the ages of prepubescence and adolescence. And you're racing through patches of poison ivy, dodging the whip of grapevine and low-hanging hackberries, past clearings where stoners spark up en route to school, past tree trunks scarred with the entwined hearts of young love. Tammy loves Daryl. Tammy loves Melvin. Tammy loves anyone who loves Tammy. Onward you thunder over roots and through mud and the thorny branch of a locust slashes your cheek and your tongue darts upward to taste the iron salt of your blood and finally you edge to the thicket and up on the end of the cross country course that leads to the high school football fields and then to the high school where it's almost rock night and the sound check is over and the students have already lined up. You're sweating and panting and bleeding and your shirt's torn and the rock and roll hasn't even started yet. I don't remember any of the other bands that played, except that they sucked, with their jock rock covers and their awkward on mic soliloquies about who they wrote their stupid wanker songs for. I'm right in front of the thrust of the stage. Four rows back, standing room, dead center. I sat through a botched Oh Black Water Keep On Rolling and a Mississippi Queen cover that was truly weak. But the last band, the last band was all I came for anyway. It's a bunch of my friends who are seniors. Robert St. Iris comes out first, dressed as Uncle Sam, his long stringy hair bursting forth from his red, white, and blue top hat. He plugs into the amp, sending forth a heavy wail of feedback which causes the sweaty throng to quake and sends teachers scurrying like rats. Then Aaron Farrington comes out on bass. He's wearing black eyeliner and black lipstick, and he just says, check, really loud into the mic, and then the drums kick it off. <laughs> Seniors rock, seniors roll. As instinctive as a fledgling bird first begins to flap its wings, I begin to headbang and then to push the other kids hard. And then I fall and I get up and I do it again and again, sometimes with my fists. I'm a whirling dervish of rock and roll energy, an atomic spinning top set on a course for total annihilation. I'm rocking out in school and I'll never be the same. They end with a huge crash as the drummer is overturned a cymbal. The lead singer screams into the mic, that was for Principal Jerry Smith. Later, he will be expelled for this. Rock Night is a legend in the lore of my hometown. It's a moment in time when it seemed all the options were on the table. Maybe we go to college and find girlfriends to marry and get a good job far away from the sweaty throngs of a high school mosh pit. Or maybe we'd go out in a blaze of glory, record some 45 second songs in a garage, press some vinyl, tell off some authority figures, immolate ourselves. More often it seems like my classmates mostly just moved on. Probably their kids will be itching to rock out soon. For me, Rock Night only added fuel to a fire already burning in my heart to make noise, to rattle my cage, to stand up and be heard, to rock out no borders, no boundaries. That I'd eventually learn to do it with a fiddle and a banjo is as inconsequential as the lipstick eyeliner color combo on a punk rock bassist. I was a hard-edged kid made for friction and looking to ignite. School gave me something to spark up against. School. That's what made me want to rock. Well, how quickly time flies when you're having fun on the Heartland Hootenanny. That's just about all the time I have for you here tonight. We want to thank tonight's guest star, the our friend, uh, Laura Cantrell. And we hope to see everybody again next Saturday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time when once again we'll raise a ruckus. And I can't wait to see you soon. So, folks, until next week, keep following us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Throw a couple bucks in the pickle jar if you can spare it. We sure want to continue random drug testing and keep the metal detectors operational here at Hootenanny High. We'll see you next week. And until we meet again, good bless, good spin, be safe, wash your hands, wear your mask, and especially have a great time. All right, and don't forget, one more thing. So long, it's been good to know ya. 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 So long, it's
it's been good to know ya. Our back to school extravaganza is almost done. And we gotta be drifting along. Now listen. Oh, the lunchbox has a thermos and an egg salad sandwich. And the spine on the textbook says, Harcourt Brace Jovanovich. And the uniform's uncomfortable, but at least there's a chance that if school's just a Zoom call, we won't have to wear pants. Singing so, so long. long. It's so long, everybody. So long. It's been good night. Have a great day. So long. It's been good to know ya. Your homework assignments to keep your hands clean and try not to catch COVID-19. Thanks again for joining us tonight on the Heartland Hoot Nanny. We appreciate you each and everyone so much out there. Thank you for your years of love and support for the Old Crow Medicine Show. And know that without your steadfast friendship, we'd probably all be dead or in jail by now. So thanks for keeping us out of the clink. And in the pink, folks, we love you. We really do. We also love tonight's guest star on the Heartland Hoot Nanny, Laura Cantrell. And who else do we love? We love teachers, students, principals, lunch ladies, custodians. We love PBS kids, Gordon Harris, Jeremy Tepper, the Havasupai, the Hopi, the Navajo, and the Wallapai Nations, Van Halen, Tom Paxton, the Harrisonburg High Blue Streaks, the city of Bismarck, North Dakota, America's most important but largely unknown African-American inventor, Garrett Augustus Morgan, Lace McNeil, the Texas Christian University Horn Frogs, Big Bird, Cookie Monster, and especially Grover. That's all the time we have for you on the Heartland. Who name? But we'll see you next week. And until then, stay safe, happy, God bless, take care, wash your hands, don't touch your face, keep your distance, stay positive, optimistic, hopeful, healthy, cheerful, groovy, motivated, untethered, wild, free, liberated, mosh pit, rock out. Good night, everybody. Good night and so long. Thank you and God bless from Nashville, Tennessee. School's out. Woo!